Friends, I am so happy to introduce a concept in curriculum design. I hope this content will be very useful for the academics who are involving in curriculum design. Learning Outcome Based Curriculum Framework LOCF Today I will try to give you an overview of this LOCF in this video LOCF part 1. So before going into the concepts of LOCF we must understand what is a curriculum. I don't want to confuse with standard definitions. I want to share my own understanding on curriculum. The curriculum consists of three components. The first one is what? What are the learning contents to be prescribed for learning? Usually we take a good book and take the contents as syllabus. The second part is how? How to deliver the content? This particular component involves the various teaching learning methods or teaching learning experiences in the classroom. If we consider the content as a product, this part of the curriculum deals with the marketing or selling the product. The third and last contact component is testing. This is to test whether the content is well received or delivered uh, by the students. If you prescribe these three in a proper structure, it will be called as a curriculum framework. Now let us see what is LOCF. LOCF is just an improved version of the curriculum design. Here, before deciding the content, we have to know the outcome. Outcome is nothing but the knowledge, skills and attitudes expected at the end from the students. How I can explain these two things in a different way. We have two people for cooking a food. One is a cook, another one is a chef. What the cook will, will do is, the cook will normally take all the contents, put in the vessel and cook the food. And he doesn't know the end product, the property of the end product. The flavor, the color, the taste is not decided at the beginning. This is what happens in our kitchen. But chef is not like that. Before cooking, the chef will decide the end outcome, end product, the expected outcome. What is that? The, the color, the quality, the taste, all these things will be determined or decided before taking the contents. Similarly, ordinary curriculum design is akin to a cook, whereas LOCF type of design is a chef type of cooking. Here, before we decide a content, we have to list out the outcomes, the expected outcome from the students. The outcomes are normally the knowledge, the skills and the attitudes of the students upon completion of a program or a course. So this is the LOCF. So LOCF has four components. First you have to write the outcome. Then you have to decide the context based on the outcome. Then we have to decide the teaching learning methods. Finally, you have to evaluate the achievement of the outcome. This, 
This thing form the LOCF, Learning Outcome Based Curriculum Framework. Let us see something on learning outcomes. You may aware or know how to write learning outcomes. Learning outcomes are the descriptors or the statements written at the beginning about the graduates or about the qualifications. Normally a graduate, graduate will be uh, upon completion of a degree or uh, say B.Sc or B.A or B.Com, M.A. These statements must describe the ability of the student upon completion of the program. This idea is originally proposed by a great educationist William Spady in 1988. Actually the learning outcomes are three components. The first component is the program outcomes, PO. These are the statements describing the abilities upon completion of a degree, say BA, BCom, BSc, etc. The second component is program specific outcomes. These are the abilities of the students upon completion of a program, say BSc Botany, BSc Physics. I hope you would have noticed the difference. Program outcomes are written for the degree, whereas program specific outcomes are written for a program. The last one is the course outcomes. These are the statements. Normally, usually, the outcomes upon completion of your course. Outcome means knowledge, skill, attitudes that the students will demonstrate after completion of the course. Course means a subject in a program, say Indian history or spectroscopy is just like that. Every module, now let us see how to write a syllabus. We have to write syllabus in various modules. Within a module, you can have sub-modules also. Here, I carefully avoid the word unit because uh, in a LOCF, we use the term modules, not units. Every module, module is a simple unit, say for one hour or two hours like that. Within a module, we can have also sub-modules also. Every module should be properly linked or mapped with the course outcomes. These course outcomes must be linked with at least one of the PSOs, program specific outcomes. Similarly, every PSOs must be linked with at least one POs. So this is the learning outcome stage of the LOCF. We have to write the PO first, PSO second, and course outcomes. And thereafter, you have to write the syllabus. In syllabus, you may have so many modules, and every all the modules must have a proper linkage with the course outcomes. Now, the question is, LOC is, is important for us. LOCF is proposed by UGC in the recent notifications. In the LOCF is a curriculum reform. UGC says that it is a curriculum reform. From 2020 onwards, from this year onwards, our all our higher education institutions should follow learning outcome based approach. So LOCF is very important for our institution. The next question is how this LOC is important for 
accreditation and all those things. India already entered into the Washington Accord. India is a full signatory of the Washington Treaty, 1989 Treaty. This treaty provides an opportunity for our country, our students, or our institutions for recognition and equivalence of programs running with OBA and accredited by the signatory countries. That means the degree awarded by our university or institution is equivalent to a degree awarded by the Singapore University or the degrees awarded by our institutions is automatically recognized by all of the countries, signatory countries. This is the idea of LOCF. Okay, we implement the LOCF. How to ensure? Who will ascertain this? The accreditation agencies. In India, we have two agencies, NAC for universities uh, and the NBA for uh, technical and professional institutions. In the NAC, you have, this is the scores for LOCF alone. In the criteria, we have 20 scores out of 150. In the criteria 2, 30 scores out of 300. In the grade criteria 6, 10. Altogether, 60 scores out of 1000. That means 6% of the max score depends on LOCF. So if we implement the LOCF in our institution, our NAC grade will be one level high. That is the importance of LOCF. Now, let us see how to implement LOCF in an institution. There are four different parts in implementation of LOCF. The first component is ILO, Intended Learning Outcome. That means what the students will be able to do at the end. What the students will be, will demonstrate at the end. This intended learning outcome has to be specified first. The second step is OBS, Outcome Based Syllabus. What will be the content? We should not copy the content of a book. We have to take contents which is properly linked or connected with the previously written ILO. The third step is outcome based teaching learning. That is how to get the students to do. Normally we do lecturing method in our classes. Now there are various teaching learning methods innovative teaching learning methods are available. We have to choose appropriate teaching learning methods to get the students do or perform. The last one is the outcome based assessment. We have to assess the students that is how well the student has done with related to the internal learning outcome we prescribed first. So we have to evaluate the outcomes at the end. So this is the idea of LOCF. I hope you would have got an overview of LOCF. Thank you very much for watching this video. Goodbye till we meet again.